What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and welcome to a little bit of discussion video. We're going to talk about Star Wars Squadrons. We finally got full, well, not full, but some gameplay footage of Star Wars Squadrons. This is going to be $39.99 when it comes out, and they announced the time frame as October 2nd for this. This will be for the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, and the PC. And I want to jump in here and look at this. This is a title that's not only going to be on those platforms, but also be VR capable the entire time. You'll be able to play the entire game through that. Now, you have a single player title where you're going to jump into this and you're going to be able to be both the Empire as well as the Rebellion jumping in and alternating stories. So each mission will be a different one. One of the parts that they showed here is they removed some of the HUD elements most likely. And so you see gameplay interspersed with the actual CGI. You can certainly tell there's some elements of gameplay here with some pop up. But what we're going to do first is we're going to talk a little bit about the different modes. Now, the first mode is that single player mode. This is going to have you going. They're saying that there's going to be probably eight pilotable ships. You're going to be going out there again, jumping between both an Imperial pilot and a Rebel pilot, both of which you will actually make at the starting of the game. And that's pretty cool. They also did show a couple different types of TIE fighters as well as a couple different types of X-Wings. These will be customizable both in the single player game and then in the multiplayer game as well. Now it's showing a breakdown of the HUD parts here. I wanna, I wanna go back and look at that just one more time. This does look in game for a couple different reasons, but one part that actually interests me, even if this isn't, is they are certainly going for a more organic HUD, even though they have obviously removed some of the elements for the actual presentation that they have. The way they're indicating here does show you that this will actually be the HUD. They're showing you the combat display, the ship status indicator and all that. Now, I've heard other people say this looks like a very busy, very claustrophobic cockpit. That is actually true of the TIE fighter in particular. It's even covered in some of the novels where some characters actually feel that it's a very contained cockpit. And whether that's going to trade off in some way to the gameplay itself, and maybe they'll have some bonuses here or there that we don't quite get or understand now due to visibility, I could definitely buy into that. Also be interesting how long the story is. It's something that I've talked about in the past. Whenever you have a shooter style game like this, you can actually make them quite long. You also see some special moves here, that twist and the inertia dampener that you see there in, is actually indicated in the skills list, which I'll show you in a little bit. I could certainly see you facing off against some enemies that have various different abilities and various different chips and chipsets in their ships, especially in that multiplayer. So we see some more combat here. It actually doesn't look so bad in the X-Wing, or actually it's not the X-Wing, but it doesn't look so bad inside there. That could be fun. Now it jumps to multiplayer and we start to see some of the multiplayer elements. What I like here is there's not a lot of ships. You've got the two fighters there. You're going to have a couple on each side. And it feels to me like looking at these stats, they're going to have various different trade-offs that are actually going to not only really feed back into that gameplay of five versus five multiplayer, but also actually feed back into the chips that you get into the upgrades that you get for the ship. And that could be great. Again, we are seeing some tight HUDs and viewpoints. Now this could interact with how you play. You look at the bomber here and you can certainly see that's very tight, but it even says they do tremendous damage. So I could see five versus five. You really have to offset who on your team has what upgrades. Now here's your customization. It's showing just the skins. They're not showing a lot. They're showing just the generic bits that they said, but they did end up indicating that there were a tremendous number and that they were not monetized at this time. So here's your upgrades. Let's look at these slowly. I'm going to break these down. Now, the reason why I want to talk about these is if you look at them, there are some cool things that you're going to be able to get rotary cannons, burst cannons. That's all great and everything, but you're also going to have beam cannons and then things like sensor inverters and the ability to adjust your deflectors, your resonance shields, all of this kind of stuff. There's a lot here that actually looks like this could end up feeding back in to the very ships that you're going to end up piloting and make a huge effect instead of a small effect. This is something that we see in a lot of multiplayer games where you start to feel like the different skills that you get are just a plus five to this or a plus five to that. It doesn't look like that's exactly what we'd be getting here. And it could be wrong. This is something that we're seeing as we jump into it. But if you, for example, look at light hull, if you were to mix light hull with some kind of internal dampener and then perhaps a different engine type, you could have an incredibly fast ship that does some of the moves that we see within this gameplay here. Because there was a couple times, especially, like I said, with U-turns and quick turns that looked a little bit off. I couldn't figure out exactly what it was. It was almost like... Well, the inertial dampeners were on, like there was some kind of system in place for that particular ship to make a really tight corner. I think that would be great if you really allow people to go out there and make a build that 
really does necessitate a completely different style of gameplay. And I think that's going to be important when you look at a five versus five team and only a couple ships on each side. It's not going to be insanely diverse, at least at the starting. It looks like, in fact, it's only going to be the official sort of major ships for each group. And then it jumped back in to show some more of that internal player. And boom, there we go. That quick turnaround, very fast turnarounds you see on a couple of these ships. Now, as it breaks down the dogfight mode, like I said, we know for a fact what exactly is coming. It will be first person all the time when you're in dogfight mode. Well, when you're in any of these modes, you will be able to play any of the modes in full VR. Now, they haven't said which VR that is. Is it going to be a PS VR? PS5 equivalent, or is it going to be your Rift and your Oculus and your WMRs? I'm sure those will be supported on the PC side, but you can absolutely do that. They said it was going to be able to allow you to jump in. There was also a part that they talk about here in a moment that will allow for you to sort of sit down in this bar and talk about your skills. Now, I think a lot of us know that these always sound good in your normal discussion, but they never really end up happening. You end up jumping directly into battle. Now, the next thing up was, speaking of battles, fleet battles. This is multiple battles staged one after the other. We've seen this in many games, including Star Wars games past of the like. What you're basically doing is you're going through waves. If you defeat the enemies on the first wave, you sort of move forward, move deeper into their territory and vice versa. And if they end up defending, it sounds like it sort of goes back. So you can have this tit for tat and this really cool balance. Again, we don't know 100% what that's going to end up turning out to be like. And I'm sorry, I did misspeak. This will be PS4 VR. So what I meant was we don't know if the PS5 will play the PS4 VR because we don't know about their support. I would hope to see next-gen systems be able to handle this. Now, you can see here one of the things they said when you're in this multiplayer mode, you're going out there, you're trying to take out the enemy's destroyer or their Republic capital ships, and you're just going out there and you're taking out their shield generators, all kinds of stuff. And those targets, well, there's one part here where it actually looks like the targets may move a bit. I'm not 100% sure if that means shields have been moved or if it just means something was destroyed. You also see a lot of various different parts where they're flying directly against the ship and that quick turnaround. One of the things they mentioned was there's a lot of subterfuge, a lot of stealth here, which I'm assuming that will impact your ability to sense somebody, you know, be able to see their ship on the radar if you're close to one of those larger capital ships. Very cool stuff here. Incredibly good special effects, even when they do bust out to what I would consider to be gameplay. Once again, be aware there are parts of CGI in most of this, as you can see right here, but then it jumps right there and it looks like it's actual gameplay. You can also see what looks to be a small drop in that resolution. I want to know what you guys think of this. I actually have to say, as I talked to my Discord about it, I decided, you know what, I'm going to do a video because this comes out October 2nd. I started to see more and more of this, and I started to actually look at those skills and think to myself, you know, this could be something for $40, right? It's not a full price game. This could be something that would be absolutely incredible to jump into with your friends. You know, not one of those games that maybe you sit around and play for thousands of hours, but maybe a title that you just really enjoy as that mid-tier title, and I think that that's what they're heading for. One thing they did say in this trailer is that they sort of hinted that single player would be short, or they didn't exactly explain its length. They said something along the lines of, you can do this, and then you can jump out, and you can do multiplayer. Another thing they said about multiplayer is great. You'll be able to take your teams not only against other players, but if you choose to, it sounds like PvE of some kind as well to attack the uh, enemy ships. So if you decide to go in with just your friends, crank that AI up and play. I'd like to know what you guys think of it. What did you think of the entire show? If you want to put that on there as well, spread the video. As always, if you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't give it a thumbs down, check out Reddit and Twitter. Please follow me there. And you can become a patron on the Patreon website if you want. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.